my name is Jaren, and today I'll be talking about development and the developmental network of spiny beetles specifically. To give you a little bit of a background knowledge, development is a process of irreversible growth that causes a sequence of regulated events, which as a whole is called a network. To learn how to interpret a developmental network and the relations between each part, we will look at a spike, formation, spike forming pathway in spiny beetles. The pathway is drawn out here. As depicted, formation of spikes in certain cells of the ectoderm of the spiny beetles is influenced by five different genes. Using this key down here, we are able to read the pathway. S gene activates the P gene. P gene then activates the I gene, which is necessary to repress or inhibit the K gene, because otherwise, E gene will be repressed by K genes and spikes cannot form. This is because E gene is necessary to eventually activate and result in appearance of spikes in the cell. To see how different mutant strains affect the texture of the ectoderm, we will be looking at some examples. For this first scenario, P gene is mutated. As a result of P gene not being, gene not being able to function properly, gene I cannot be activated, which then results in the K gene not being blocked. And when K gene is present, it blocks the E gene. And E gene then cannot activate spikes, which will result in appearance of smooth cells instead of spiky ones. In this scenario, we are presented with mutated I gene, so K gene cannot be inhibited. In other words, K gene will be expressed if I gene is not present to block it. Similarly, E gene cannot be inhibited when K gene is activated, resulting in spikeless cells at the end of the pathway. In this third scenario, we have double mutations of I and E genes. Since at the end of every pathway, you would normally need the E gene to get spikes, just the mutation of E gene is enough to result in a spikeless ectoderm cell. In short, if we lose E, we cannot activate the spike formation. In this last scenario, we have the double mutation of S and K genes. If S is not present, P will not be activated, and as a result, I will not be activated, and it won't be able to inhibit K. But it's okay because we don't have K genes in the system anyway. If we lose K, then E genes won't be blocked, so we can activate the spikes. So in this scenario, we will have spiky cells. Spikes everywhere on the beetle's ectoderm will get in the way of the beetle's movement. Too many spikes also increase the weight of the beetle, which eventually slows it down, and this is critical when the beetle is running away from predators. And this is why some of the ectoderm cells have the spikes and others are smooth. 